Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, episode 270, Post-Traumatic Growth in the Small Things. Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, the only podcast that offers a proven process to help you work through your grief, to grow, evolve, and create a future you can truly look forward to. Here's your host, Master Certified Life Coach, Grief Expert, Widow, and Mom, Krista St. Germain. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast. We're going to talk about post-traumatic growth, which is one of my favorite subjects. We're going to talk about it again. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. So it is at the time, if you listen to this episode, when it releases, I am at Heather's Camp, which is my favorite time of the year. And I always like talking about it too, because maybe you know someone who would benefit from Heather's Camp in the future. So Heather's Camp is a camp for kids who are blind or visually impaired. And we started it in 2000. Wow. Way back in 2000 in memory of my sorority sister, Heather Muller, who died. And she loved working with her teenies, as she called them. She was working on her degree in early childhood special education, her master's degree. And her life was cut way too short. She was only 25 when she died. And so we created this camp in, in her memory and also because there was it, there was a need for it, right? An example of post-traumatic growth, by the way, and maybe one that feels a little bit intimidating, which is partly what I want to talk about today. But anyway, I say that to say, if you know a child, and by child, I mean about five to in their early 20s, depending on their developmental needs, typically 18 if they are typically developing. But if you know a child who would benefit from a summer camp experience, it's only at this point four days long, and but we give the most normal camp experience we can possibly have, right? So we do archery and we do swimming and we do horseback riding and crafts and all the things that you would expect to do at summer camp. And we just modify them. We even do high ropes. Not only do we do low ropes, we do very high ropes. And kids are so much more capable than they believe that they are. And then sometimes that we believe that they are. And we work with kids from all over. And if you, so if you know a child who would benefit from that, hit us up next year, reach out to me and I will connect you. And um, no child ever goes unhelped if it's about money. And we do have kids that fly in from other parts of the country. So it's something I just absolutely love. It warms my heart like no other. And of course, you know, it has a special connection um, in, in another way in terms of grief, because it was where we were coming back from when the accident happened that ultimately took Hugo's life. And he had only been there one year. We now give a first time volunteer award every year away in his name, Hugo St. Germain. And it it was something that I think he was surprised that he loved as much as he did, but it's really fun to watch him love it. And so it has a special place in my heart. So we will be doing that while you are listening to this, <laughs> um, probably hotter than the blue blazes, which is typical. As long as it's not windy, we'll be good. Just <laughs> super windy. Sometimes Kansas can be so windy and it's up high in the Flint Hills. And I have been out there at times when it is so windy, like archery is a joke. So we don't want white caps on the lake where we swim. Um, but anyway, that's what's going on in my neck of the woods. And so that's why I'm recording this a little bit early because there's so much going on in July. And I want to make sure that this episode gets to you. So, okay. Post-traumatic growth in the small things is what I want to talk about today. And what brought it up was that not too long ago, I did an interview on someone else's podcast. I love going on other people's podcasts and talking about grief and post-traumatic growth. And I really do feel that the more we can have these conversations, even in spaces where it's not because like in this space, someone is a widow and that's why they're listening. It's because maybe they haven't had a significant grief experience yet. But if I can have those conversations with people, then I can help better prepare them. Like I wish someone would have prepared me and you, right? So know that if you ever, if there's a podcast that you love and you think that would benefit or be open to a grief conversation, let me know that. But going back to this podcast interview that I did, the host wanted to talk about post-traumatic growth and his understanding of it was that it meant you had to do big things. And the example he gave me was like Batman, which is so far from where my brain goes. I guess I'm just not a Batman person, but he said, you know, like Batman, how Batman lost his parents and he went on to 
you know, win all of these epic big battles and save Gotham City and, you know, go up against formidable villains. It's just very big, right? So he experienced this trauma in his young life, losing his parents. And then post-traumatic growth was this whole new persona and this grandiose experience where he saved the entire city of Gotham on a regular basis. Woo, like that's a lot of pressure, right? And so I wanted to talk about post-traumatic growth in the small things to remind us that it's not just about epic battles and formidable villains and saving Gotham City, right? It is, and that's no offense to those who go on to do really big things like that. That's amazing if that's what you want, but that's not all that post-traumatic growth is. So I want to quickly review what post-traumatic growth is because you might have never heard me talk about that before and then talk about what it actually can look like for you and give you some ideas of maybe where you are already creating it. And I want to give you a couple of episodes. We'll put this in the show notes, but if you want to learn more about post-traumatic growth, as you listen to this episode, go back and listen to episode eight, post-traumatic growth is real. Episode 153, what's possible. Episode 168, Tornadoes and Post-Traumatic Growth, and I would also suggest episode 249, Uncommon Widowhood. Those are all great episodes if you want to learn more. And of course, anytime you listen to one of the interviews that I have done with a client, the Widows Unfiltered interviews, you will see how they have created post-traumatic growth for themselves. You'll see it. So post-traumatic growth, phrase that was created in the mid-90s by a couple of researchers, what they noticed in the course of their studies was that there were more options after a traumatic event than they had previously thought possible. So before they did their work, first of all, we were relating to trauma as sub as objective, meaning that we kind of had a list of things that we considered traumatic. Now, you know, here we are in 2024, we very much understand that it's not so much about an objective experience. Trauma really is subjective. And what could be traumatic for you might not be traumatic for me and vice versa. And that doesn't mean that I'm better than you or you're worse than me or the other way around. It just means that trauma is subjective. We experience things differently. And so prior to the idea of post-traumatic growth, it was really thought that there would be a level of wellness that someone would be experiencing, satisfaction with life at a particular level. The traumatic event would happen so for us, death of a partner, typically very dramatic. And that level of wellness or life satisfaction would dip. And for some people, it would never change. It would just stay down. Then for other people, it would bounce back. It would dip, but then it would bounce back to where it was previously. And that was kind of the best we thought was possible, that we would experience this dip. And then the goal was just to get back to where we were with life satisfaction, quality of life, wellness. And what their work discovered is that actually that's not all that's possible. There's this third group of people, and by the way, some of their work was studying widows that had lost their spouse. There's this third group of people who were not just bouncing back, but they were bouncing forward. They were reporting greater levels of wellness and life satisfaction after the loss the trauma, and not in spite of it, but because of it, because of what they had decided to do after it happened. Now, that does not mean they were grateful for it, okay? I want to be really clear on that. Kind of makes me a little frustrated when I hear people teaching that you have to be grateful for something that has happened to you that you experienced as traumatic. That is absolute nonsense. You don't. So it doesn't mean that they were grateful, although some people are, and you certainly can be if you want to. I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm just, I just want to make sure you don't create another should for yourself here. But basically, the traumatic event happened or the, exp the experience that they experienced as traumatic, the event that they experienced as traumatic happened that in, in many ways is a wake-up call. I know for me, for sure, I was just going through the motions of being an adult, going through the motions of believing all the things that I had been socially programmed to believe. And 
working a job that was okay, but not really what I loved. And in a lot of relationships that were okay, but weren't really what I wanted them to be, right? There were many areas of life that was just on autopilot. And when we experience something as traumatic, it can be a, a record scratch, right? Where everybody else is still living the world, you know, seems to be functioning as it was before. But for us, time can stop. For us, we can go, wait, whoa, okay. If life is this precious, if it really is this precarious, am I living the way that I want to be living? How could I live in a way that is more aligned with what I value? And that doesn't need to mean doing epic things. It could, but it doesn't need to. So post-traumatic growth is primarily in, in terms of the work that Tadeshi and Calhoun did, although I think honestly we could find other areas, but it's primarily in five areas that they discovered and documented. So personal strength, realizing how strong you are, realizing that you're capable of more than you thought, new possibilities, right? Seeing that there are maybe things that are possible for you in life or being open to new possibilities in life that you hadn't been open to before relationships with others. And for most of us, that means deeper relationships with others. That means changing our relationships. Appreciation for life. There is nothing like losing something or someone that you care deeply about to show you that life is precious and then often point you towards an appreciation that you, you just had never experienced before. And then the fifth dimension is spiritual change. And for some people, that means completely throwing out the faith tradition that they had. For some people, that means really questioning it and coming to an even greater appreciation for their spiritual change. It might, might be making changes in that regard. So you, sometimes I bring people on the podcast and you hear them tell these stories and I get that it can be a little bit intimidating, right? You hear you know, people talk about nonprofits that they started like I did or major career changes or, you know, big things that feel big and, and, and maybe a little Batman like, but really every day I'm working with women who are creating post-traumatic growth in ways that maybe they don't even label as post-traumatic growth because they don't feel big, but they do qualify. They are growth. They have looked at their values. They have found something that is incongruent or could be more congruent and they have made a change and that requires courage and that requires bravery and that can be done in very small things. And what I want to tell you, I'm going to give you some examples here in a minute. What I want to tell you is that sometimes the things that we look at from a distance that seem big or epic and maybe they, they're having an amazing impact on the world, and maybe they're having an amazing impact on the person who created them. But sometimes those things don't require for that person as much bravery or courage as the changes we might never notice that they made. It can be easier to go out and create something meaningful and you know, start an organization or change your career. It can be easier for some of us to do that than it is to change the one relationship that we have where we're always saying yes when what we want to say is no. And this is not to prioritize bravery and courage over doing things that feel easy and meaningful. I'm not saying that. I'm saying let's expand what we consider post-traumatic growth and let's not make it mean that it has to be big or epic. And let's acknowledge that it's that different changes are easier for some of us than others. And that's not bad or good or, or wrong or right. It just is. It just is. So for me, some of the things that I did after Hugo died that were post-traumatic growth seemed bigger than others, right? Leaving my career and becoming a coach. That does seem big on the outside, creating this, you know, coaching business that I have now that makes me way more money than I used to make before and brings me so much more satisfaction and love. And I wake up every day and I'm like, holy crap, not that it's not hard some days because it very much is, but holy crap, I get to do this. It feels no offense to my old job. It feels way different to me. It does seem kind of big. 
right? So, but some of the smaller things that are still post-traumatic growth were investing less time in letting relationships end that I was really just going through the motions in, right? Things that weren't the true, vulnerable, authentic connections that I wanted. It was easier for me to walk away from those. That's post-traumatic growth too. Beginning to appreciate the fragility of life and slowing down doesn't seem epic, but it, it is more aligned with what I value. And that is post-traumatic growth too. And for so many of my clients, it looks like those little things. Maybe it's that they go for a promotion at work, or maybe it's that they said no to a promotion at work because they genuinely didn't want it. When before they just would have kept saying yes and climbing the ladder and accepting more responsibilities. And now they have a different approach. They want to take a different approach. Maybe it's being honest about something that they really want to do, that they've never given themselves permission to do. And it doesn't have to be big. Maybe it's little. Maybe it's a trip that they wanted to take. Maybe it's something that they wanted to learn. Maybe it's, I see a lot of it in terms of um, just being more of you, like slowly learning to turn up the dial, the volume on you, on who you really are and what really matters to you so that you're moving through the world in a way that feels just more honest, which can be scary when we're used to being chameleons. For some people, it means developing a sense of empathy that is deeper, sensitivity that is deeper toward others who are suffering because we now know suffering, which maybe it shows up in volunteering and maybe it shows up in, you know, becoming involved in some sort of grief counseling or grief coaching or, you know, it, it could be a time-consuming thing. Maybe it just means that we, we are better able to be present with people who we care about when they are suffering because we have suffered. That's post-traumatic growth too. Maybe we are just savoring small things. I remember when I came back from coach certification, actually, I just remembered like feeling this sense of awe that it was so surreal to me. It was almost out of body, but not in a dissociative way and just like in a kind of a surreal way where I was just blown away that the plane could fly through the air. <laughs> and I say that as someone who spent 10 years working in aerospace, like not a mystery to me, but yet also everything just felt wonderful and mysterious and alive and fascinating. And I had this appreciation for things in ways that I had just never had before. Even to go out and sit on my back porch at the time and just listen to the birds and feel my feet on the pavement and drink my coffee and, and swing in my little porch swing. I just felt still a lot of pain, but deeply alive and connected and appreciating what it was like to be alive. That, that can be post-traumatic growth. So I want you to give yourself permission. I hope that you will to think about what is possible for you in, in, in ways that aren't epic. It doesn't have to be, you know, fighting major villains and saving Gotham city. And I hope that in thinking of it in that way and in expanding the way that you think about what's possible for you, that it takes some of the pressure or resistance off of you. It does not need to be a should. It doesn't make you a better person if you create post-traumatic growth for yourself. And you definitely don't have to be grateful that it happened in order to decide, okay, here is what I value. Uh, this is what I want more of in my life. This is what I want less of in my life. This is who I want to be, right? That's post-traumatic growth. And that is available to all of us. Whether you come join one of my programs and coach with me or not, 
I would love it if you did, by the way, because I, there's nothing I love to do more, but you don't have to. So it's just an option that exists if you want it, post-traumatic growth. So here's what I want to leave you with. Two questions I want you to ask yourself because you've probably already created post-traumatic growth. So the first question is, can you find it? Can you find even very small ways that you have created post-traumatic growth already? And then the second question I, I want you to ask yourself is what growth or change could you create that would feel really good to you? What would you like to create next? It doesn't have to be big. It can be as little as you want it to be. But what would you like to create next? And let your brain go with that question. Let your brain really consider. Magic wand land. What would you just really love to create next? I want to offer to you that it is possible. It is possible. To the extent that you are willing to believe that it is possible for you and take action so that you can create it, it is possible. But first, before we create it, we have to imagine it. And it doesn't have to be epic. It can be totally small. All right? Okay. That's what I have for you this week. Remember, I love you. You've got this. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If you like what you've been hearing on this podcast and want to create a future you can truly get excited about even after the loss of your spouse... I invite you to join my Mom Goes On coaching program. It's small group coaching just for widowed moms like you, where I'll help you figure out what's holding you back and give you the tools and support you need so you can move forward with confidence. Please don't settle for a new normal that's less than what you deserve. Go to coachingwithkrista.com and click work with me for details and next steps. I can't wait to meet you.